This week's deadly shooting at an elementary school in Texas renews calls for legislation to address it. Is it time to accept the status quo and the consequences that come with it? And Republicans running for governor of Illinois appear in two separate debates, half the field in each. We'll talk about that this morning with Iowa Republican Party Chair Jeff Kaufman and former Rock Island Mayor Mark Schwiebert, a Democrat. Always great to see you both. Let's get right to it and start with the Illinois governor's race, specifically the Republican primary. There are six Republicans now vying for their party's nomination. Nomination. Some of their differences came out in two different debates Tuesday night. Neither had all of them on the same stage. Now, the first one, hosted by the NBC affiliate in Chicago, included Aurora Mayor Richard Irvin, former state senator Paul Schimpf, and attorney Max Solomon. The one, that one ended and immediately gave way to the debate hosted by our sister station, WGN in Chicago with current state senator Darren Bailey, along with entrepreneurs Jesse Sullivan and Gary Rabine. Now, polling shows more than a third of Republicans are undecided. Richard Irvin, with the most money in the race, leads among those who are not undecided. However, the other candidates in his debate are polling the lowest. The debate with Darren Bailey, Jesse Sullivan, and Gary Rabine featured the candidates who are more competitive with Irvin, and they made sure to criticize Irvin for not being there with them. Bailey himself made headlines on the issue of criminal justice reform when he called Chicago a hellhole, and Irvin during his debate dodged the question about whether he voted for Donald Trump in the last presidential election. I guess based on what you've seen and read, did any candidate gain an advantage in these debates? And uh, what kind of treatment is this for, I guess, Republican voters as a whole to have the separate debates? Jeff, you're the Republican. I know you're an Iowa guy, not Illinois, but how about you getting started with us, Jeff? Sure. And I, I watched the debate. I, you know, I had some sympathy. If you recall, we had so many Republicans running. Uh, in 2016, we had to divide up uh, into a first debate and a second debate. It, it's hard. I mean, I, I, have, I have sympathy for the situation they were in. It's so hard to compare and contrast, and especially if you have someone that's seen as the front runner that's not in the same group as the other front runners. So it's, it, it's, it's confusing. I think probably the, the individuals in that second debate probably had some merit in, in criticizing uh, the uh, the perceived front runner at least for not joining that debate. I you know I, I saw several themes uh, that were you know on the macro level, uh, the Chicago versus the non-Chicago so to speak. In Iowa, we kind of look at that a little bit more as a rural versus urban, but it was certainly there uh, in in major way. And then the establishment versus the non-establishment, even though those those terms weren't used, you could see that. I think that will begin to help voters. To, uh, to turn things around um, in their minds, decide uh, what they want to do. This seems to be wide open to me. I would say, I would say that, the, that, the, that the fellow that uh, used the hellhole uh, comment, I, I guess I think that he made, uh, he made a lot of headlines. You All you got to do is type in hellhole in Google, and you'll see there's a whole lot of folks there. I mean, it's a risky thing on his part, obviously. Uh, you know, is he going to exactly push away the moderates in uh, Chicago where he might have a chance, or the people that are tired of Pritzker? I don't know. Does that solidify things uh, with some of the other non-Chicago candidates? It remains to be told. So a lot of predictability there, uh, very interesting, and again, a lot of sympathy from my part on having to divide that into two. All right. It is interesting to see the, the downstate versus Chicago dynamic there, that's for sure. And it's hard to, I guess, hard to gauge who necessarily gained an advantage. Well, Mark, did you see anybody with a clear-cut advantage, and what do you make of the two different debates? Well, I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch the debate, so I don't have the advantage of, uh, of a first-hand observation as to what was said. I have reviewed some of the comments that were made about the debates, and I think Jeff uh, probably hit on one of the points that uh, was most publicized afterwards. I'm not sure how someone in Illinois, even though we have our differences sometimes between Chicago and the downstate, advances their fortunes as a potential governor of the entire state by calling uh, the, the largest single voting bloc in the state a hellhole. Uh, to me, that doesn't seem like a very positive attitude towards one of the economic engines that drives the state of Illinois and which we're inextricably tied with. Uh, it's part of what we, what we live with here in Illinois, and in many respects, it's a very positive thing. It's attracted major industries to Illinois. It's allowed for population growth in the last census, even though the numbers, because of some faulty procedures, didn't reflect that. Uh, but I think it, uh, it, it, it doesn't reflect well on a candidate that he would isolate one of the parts of the state that way. Uh, it, it appears that the two candidates are the front runners in the race, Richard Urban, the mayor of Aurora, and then uh, Barry Bailey. Um, uh, and, and those two candidates weren't pitted against each other in the debate. So uh, it'll be interesting. I know there is another debate that's scheduled where all six candidates will be on the same floor. And 
although it'll be a crowded field, it'll probably uh, give a little more opportunity for voters to do a comparison between them and determine which, if they, if they happen to be Republicans, is their preferred choice. And of course, let's not forget, there are a lot of Republicans who do live and lo live in Chicago and certainly love that city, so it is an interesting comment. Oh, Mark Schwebert, Jeff Coppin, Stan Bible. We'll get to our conversation about gun violence in light of this week's school shooting in Texas in a moment. Those of you watching at home, please check that out in a web extra at arquacities.com. That subject is the focus of our question of the week. You see it there. What do you think can be done to make murder harder? Send your answer by email to for the record at whbf.com or respond to this post on Facebook at the local 4 News WHBF TV page or on my page.